Outside of zoos, there are no crocodilians in Japan or Taiwan. However, this was not always the case. Both Japan and Taiwan were once home to the massive Tayotama femia. First discovered in 1964, Tayotama femia lived between 3.5 million years ago to 300,000 years ago, during the Ice Ages. It belongs to the clade Gavialidae, the same clade as the modern Gerial and Tomastoma, the false Gerial. Like them, Toyotama femia's snout was slenderer than most other crocodilians. Besides its tail, most of Toyotama femia's skeleton has been found. It is estimated to have been between 6.9 to 7.7 meters long. This is absolutely massive. For comparison, the largest recorded living crocodilian was a saltwater crocodile named Lolong, who was just under 6.2 meters long when he died. While Toyotama femia's meter-long skull was long and slender compared to most other crocodilians, it was also shorter and wider than the skulls of the two living species of Gavialids. Its teeth were also larger than theirs, but fewer in number. One of Toyotama femia's identifying characteristics is that its largest tooth was the seventh maxillary tooth. The largest tooth in most other crocodilians is instead either the fourth or fifth maxillary tooth, although the teeth of some species, including gharials, are of more or less equal size. Gavialids, both modern and extinct, are piscivores, meaning they primarily hunt fish. Their long snouts increase the chances of catching their quarry, while their slender shape creates little resistance in the water. Still, they will attack smaller terrestrial animals when the opportunity presents itself. Additionally, records of the extinct Gavialid Honyusuchus, one of Toyotama femia's closest relatives, indicates that it was at least perceived as a threat to livestock. With its wider skull, larger teeth, and sheer size, Toyotama femia could have been one of the top predators in prehistoric Japan and Taiwan. Still, while capable of taking on large animals, its slender snout suggests it preyed upon fish more often than most other crocodilians. For the most part, Toyotama femia's postcranial skeleton is not very distinct from its relatives. The humerus in its front limbs was long, which is similar to the front limbs of the modern gharial. Out of all modern crocodilians, the gharial is the least suited for terrestrial locomotion, and adults are not even capable of the high walk seen in other species. Due to its greater weight, Toyotama femia may have been even more clumsy when on land. When it was first found in 1964, Toyotama femia was thought to belong to the genus Tomastoma, like the modern false gharial. Even after it was determined to belong to its own unique genus in 1983, Toyotama femia was still thought to be more closely related to the false gharial than to the true gharial. Given that the false gharial has a more robust snout than the gharial, the resemblance is easy to see. However, more recent research has determined that Toyotama femia was actually a basal member of the gharial branch of Gavialidae. It turns out that the first Gavialids started out with skulls very similar to those of the false gharial, and Toyotama femia's ancestors branched off before the thinner, gharial-like skull evolved. Toyotama femia's closest relatives were Pengusuchus, who also lived in Taiwan, and the previously mentioned Hanyusuchus, who lived in China just a few thousand years ago. The holotype Toyotama femia skeleton was found during the construction of a new building at Osaka University. Toyotama femia is named after the Japanese goddess Toyotama Hime. 
Toyotama Hime was claimed to be the grandmother of the first Japanese emperor, and in some myths transformed into a crocodile or sea monster. The holotype wasn't actually the first specimen that was discovered. Part of a fossil Gavialan skull was found in Taiwan during 1936, but it was believed to have been destroyed during an air raid in 1945. The fossil was rediscovered in 2013, and while it has molten glass attached to it, it is still in good enough condition to be identified as Tyotoma femia. It is thought to belong to a new species of Tyotoma femia, and other Tyotoma femia fossils in Taiwan may be from a possible third species. While most of Taiwan is subtropical, Tyotoma femia's presence in Japan is remarkable because it is temperate. Crocodilians are ectothermic, or cold-blooded, and therefore struggle to inhabit colder environments. Japan is considered to be as far north as a crocodilian can survive. Even so, it probably had to enter a dormant state during the winter. This same behavior is employed by the American alligator and the Chinese alligator, who live the furthest north out of all crocodilians today. Tyotoma femia is still thought to have gone locally extinct in much of Japan during the Ice Ages. During the warmer interglacial periods, it recolonized its lost territory from surviving populations in either southern Japan or another landmass. This had the potential to create genetic bottlenecks. The increasing lack of genetic diversity may have been why Tyotoma femia eventually went extinct. Of course, the climate wasn't the only threat a Tyotoma femia would have faced. They also had to worry about each other. The holotype skeleton possesses numerous paleopathologies including fractures on its hind lungs, bite marks on its osteoderms, and most strikingly, the tip of its lower jaw had been bitten off. The bite marks indicate it was injured by a member of the same species. The source of this intraspecies conflict can be seen in modern crocodilians, who will sometimes fight each other over territory or mates. Despite its lack of fame, Tyotoma femia was one of the most amazing recently extinct species. It was larger than any modern crocodilian, and not much would have had to change for this magnificent reptile to have survived to the modern day. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something interesting. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit the like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more. I have recently set up YouTube memberships for the channel, which you can join if you'd like a way to support it. Members will have access to exclusive polls that will determine the topics of some of the future videos. Finally, be sure to have a great day.